Hello, and welcome to the Joss Brown Podcast. With over 40 years of combined financial planning experience, we will discuss our favorite topics, concepts, and stories. Hello, welcome to the Joss Brown Podcast. I'm Devin Joss. We have Dan Joss here and our guest expert speaker, Ed Barnhart. Uh, He's been with State Farm for 39 years now. He started in Lexington, Lexington, North Carolina for seven years. So you must have been, what, 16 when you started? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Then, uh, sorry, that just like, <laughs> threw me off a little bit. As reading it this works. Introduction. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, he moved to uh, Virginia Beach in 1990, and this is where he's currently and still working for State Farm. Uh, he did his undergraduate uh, in education at Ohio University. The uh, where, Ohio University. Yeah. Ohio University. Ohio, Ohio University. Not the Ohio What's State the? University. Oh, that's the okay. is Ohio State. I'm from the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> and then he uh, got his master's degree in guidance and counseling from Cleveland State University. Uh, prior to joining State Farm, he was a high school guidance counselor. Uh, so thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, so you <laughs> listen to our podcast uh, with just the advisors talking about uh, property and casualty insurance. Um, what, did, what did you think about that? I thought it was very nice. You gave a very nice overview. <clears throat> In fact, I was sitting back there and I thought, why am I here? <laughs> um, but, you know, I can probably go into some more details. And <clears throat> I apologize right now. I got this sinus drainage going on. So normally, I actually have a voice. But, you know, when, to me, when I'm thinking about what, what you do as professionals and thinking from insurance... To me, the, the, the obvious thing was the umbrella mm. because uh, you're dealing with people who have assets that, quite frankly, they can lose everything. And you were talking about some examples. And I, I, with regard to the umbrella, you know, in my agency alone, I'm just going just to mention a few things that, that we've had. Um, I call the umbrella policy, it, it, it's, it's, it's more like it's a... Um, it's a catch-all. It's um, there's weird stuff that happened in our society. You know, I have had uh, I had a child drown in a pool, and uh, of course the umbrella came into play there. And probably one of the most unusual situations that I've had. I've had the excess coverage with regard to automobile. And of course, the the pool situation was was the homeowners. But I had a lady, she, she saw a child uh, actually steal a piece of, still, still like a candy bar. And the child stuck the candy bar in his pocket and started to walk out with well, this lady. Instinctly, she reached in the child's pocket to say, hey, you stole this candy bar. She got charged with sexual abuse. Mm. And it was covered underneath the umbrella. So your umbrella policy, it's, it's excess, what we call excess, and yeah. Dan, you mentioned as far as the underlying limits, you have to have a certain amount of liability on your homeowner's yeah. policy, or mm-hmm. whether it's a second home or a boat or whatever. And then the, the umbrella is on top of that. Well, for a civil type situation, you, you have coverage. In, in this case, it was, quote, a civil case. Mm-hmm. And there was, um, of course, there's no deductible and that type of thing. And, and we covered, and in a lot of cases with regard to umbrellas, Often, the, the largest payout from our perspective is for the legal cost, you know. And then mm-hmm. there, you know, there's times where the people they win, and, and there is a settlement yeah. of X amount of dollars. But it it and and I, it varies how all this is going to be handled. But it's like it's like a pot of money, whether it's a million or two million or five million mm-hmm. or whatever. And so, um, umbrellas, I I think are just. Well, if it's a, necessary, and you've said it's a catch-all, yes, and I get that it's it covers lots of things, um, and I would <clears> assume <throat> you sell or you make sure that most of your clients have it, if not all of them. Or how does that part well, work? Well, because the, when a client it, comes to us, we find more often than not they don't have it and they've never heard of it, which means there's someone not like you in their life that's saying you got to have this. Well, a lot of my clients. I mean, because I cover people whose assets are minimal to people whose assets are, you know, fairly substantial. Uh-huh. And so, um, 
you know, when, when I'm dealing with someone who has very low assets, you know, the, the idea of them getting an umbrella, they're just wanting to get by on minimum what they have to have. So what is, but, what is that number for you? Is there, is there a, when would you start recommending somebody consider getting an umbrella policy? Maybe that's Dep the, Really, it depends on the value of their assets. Yeah. I, would, I would say. Or their risk. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's, uh, if somebody has, to me, a half million dollars in assets, they need an umbrella. Okay. But I don't have a hard and fast, okay, this is sure. the number. In, in talking with the client, it's, all right, what do you think? And, and some people are just more risk adverse than others. I mean, I can think of a client right now who has all sorts of assets who, who just does not believe in insurance. Hmm. And I've talked with him and I've said, hey, just so you know, if this, something like this happens, I mean, you run the risk of losing everything. Hmm. But, it, you know, it's not my place to beat somebody in the head and say, look, this is what you have to do because I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. do that. Um, but if they have, a, I guess, an average house costs three or three hundred fifty thousand dollars now, and a couple of cars, new cars. They, now. they should give consideration to a number. New, yes. new cars now are probably forty forty five thousand dollars. Right, and of course, you know, you can we can increase coverage on the on the the liability part on yeah. the auto policy to cover that what you're talking about, yeah. the property damage and you know that type of thing. But an umbrella is probably the to me, it's one of the least expensive ways to cover all that. Yeah, because it rarely happens. Well, it, it, it rarely lots of, happens. lots of people paying some premiums. And but when it does happen, it can be catastrophic. Yeah. And so um, the idea with regard, let's, let's take an auto, an auto policy. With us, and I can only speak with State Farm, you have to carry what we call 250 500 100, meaning if you're in an accident, from a liability perspective, you have, we're covering the people in the other car at least a quarter million for each person in that other car for their injuries and half a million for the total accident. Hundred thousand dollars property damage. That's their car. And you mentioned a situation where a car hit and hit some five other cars or whatever. And that's that happens. That that's not like a one-time event. Right. <laughs> But um, I'm hoping it's not my one time event. No, no, no. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I get that. But the, um, I mean, th those things happen, and, and you know, you just need that kind of coverage. Yeah. You know, and, and we're talking about people with assets, but an example, we're talking about examples, and I want to come back to an example of this, maybe kind of on the other, but for, I'm going to go back, and this, this happened in 1986. But I had an insured who, um, of course, the limits of liability of them are lower, but my point to them was, hey, they were carrying minimum, and I said, if somebody hits you and you don't have good limits of liability, you could lose everything. Yeah. And, I mean, it was, I don't know, five or six months later, a, um, a, a, a person who had been drinking heavily mm. went down in the median and actually the pickup truck flipped over upside down, and when it hit my insured, roof hit roof. Mm. And uh, had they not had good limits of liability, and this is not, but this is not umbrella. This is on their basic policy. Yeah. Financially, they would have been destroyed. And so, your limits of, of of liability, what you give other people, you get yourself. Now, the state legislature in Virginia has just come out with a new law. All the states called have enhanced different minimums. Well, well, they've done that. Yeah. But the state of Virginia has changed what they call it enhanced underinsured motors which basically means you get whatever the other person's carrying plus what you have, which is a little bit different than it is now. My point is this, carrying good limits of liability and uninsured motors, you're not only protecting other people, you're protecting yourself. And that's, that's anyhow. Well, that's, that's good. Let me take your word there of good. You said good, but you've also been doing this for 39 years. Yes. So your good may be different from another agent's good. Yes. Well, how would you recommend anybody look for an insurance provider either agent or a company because well, you okay. can watch a sporting event mm -hmm. on tv and you're going to see five different insurance companies saying sure get this arguably everyone needs at least something sure but but what's beyond that well <clears throat> i'm biased well you're uh, you know i we can only use your 
experience. Well, and so you, know, you I, get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> My thought is, I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to deal with a professional human being. And because I have clients come to me and they'll say, uh, for example, I'm going to go online and, you know, if somebody finds this offensive, I'm just giving you my opinion. Somebody, they're going to go online and they're going to do their will without involving an attorney, without, and, you know, uh-uh. You know, I'm going to go to a professional. And with, with an insurance, I'm going to go to a professional. And I want to sit down and I want to talk with someone, um, just, just like you folks. I mean, a, a financial advisor, I'm going to sit down. Number one, somebody I have confidence in who, you know, who's, who's honest. And, and, you know, I don't care what profession you're in, 95% of us are honest, but the other 5% you have to be concerned with. You know, I, I would talk with people. I would talk to my friends, my family, my neighbors, and say, hey, tell me who you deal with. I would get recommendations. Yep. Who do, you, who do you deal with? How's your experience? Would sure. you recommend them to somebody? Sure. Yep. So know. if we're at a Super Bowl party, I've probably got 30 recommendations now. Mm. <laughs> For insurance providers? Yeah. Okay. At least, at least <clears throat> 10 companies, because we've seen five of them on, the, on yeah. the commercials. Oh, yes. And now we say, are you in the local area? Can we meet in person? Can you review all that? It, can you review everything I have right now, and mm -hmm. how would you compare to that? You you would do those kind of reviews. Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, when clients come to us, quite you know, we we want to review everything, and and, and we, I mean, we're like everybody else. We're looking to make sure that we, it, 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 it's a competitive situation. So you want to make sure that you're giving the people all the possible discounts that 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 they're entitled to. Mm -hmm. But you all, we also want to make sure that we're giving them the, the right coverage. Yeah. Um, if you if you call insurance companies, just call them. And some companies, you know, all they want to do is give you a low premium, um, without actually talking about right, the coverage. Right. 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 So, because, you know, but yeah, and, we're in this for the long run. I'm not interested in somebody coming to us for six months and, and leaving. That's that's not the goal. Yeah. And maybe the same is true. Would you be interested in someone that says, "I want you to sell me this insurance." Instead of saying, "What do you think I should have?" And well, and let's talk th about there, it. There's, there, there's minimums in there. Okay. If somebody, for example, and I've, you know, and and now you would you would never come across it, but, um, I mean, when I started 39 years ago, if somebody wanted to homeowners without replacement cost, I wouldn't do it, because I knew, if there's a claim, there there's going to be trouble, and, uh, so. I think it's fair to say that. Lots of different insurances have gotten better over the last 39 years. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, again, as an insurance professional, I, um, the, the vast majority of us, I mean, we're all trying to do what's right for the people. Mm. I mean, that's, that's just that's the way it is. Do you have some sort of import? intake form that says you know list all your assets you know because we've had clients two or three years later when we're reviewing their financial net worth statements say oh yeah i also have and they name you know another piece of real estate or they name an account that they were hiding from us for some reason do you have people that say oh yeah i forgot about my car or i forgot about something I do not. Have, I do not have a form. Okay. That you that where you fill out everything. We ask the questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, especially when you're talking about an umbrella, you've got to have all that information. Yep. Because going back to an umbrella, it won't be picked up. We have to know home, how many <laughs> autos, who are the drivers, uh, how many rental properties. Do you have an RV? Do you have a boat? What type of boat? Because, as you said earlier, because all that it, it, it will increase the exposure. But you want to make sure if something happens, you know, I don't want something to happen and somebody say, well, yeah, you could have done that, but you didn't. I'm not interested in that. That's what separates professionals. Well, it's one I, of the I'm, I'm just, I'm not interested in, in any problems. You know, I've been doing this for 39 years and we're going, I'm going to be doing it for how much longer, but uh, don't need those issues. We talked a little bit about how 
financial advisors, how we look at our clients' insurance. Um, so when someone walks through the door, uh, whether they have insurance or not, how do you sort of process them and get them acquainted with everything? Really just sit down and start asking them the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me about you. All right, Devin. All right, Devin. <laughs> just tell Just tell me what you got. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And then... You, you you know you you give us the Devon story, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not long, it's two or three minutes. But in in those three minutes time, we have the information. Yeah. Uh, well, we we have the the parameters, and then it's all right. Give us now. Now we talk about the basics. And you know what's your address, and you know, mm -hmm. you know we just go from there. And I mean, with with homeowners insurance, it's de you're dealing with the home, and it has the person had any losses. With automobile insurance, you're dealing with, you know, your vehicles and when was the last time you had an accident or a violation, and you know, all all those factors are involved. How long you've been with insurance with your mm -hmm. your current carrier, um, and now insurance companies have really your, your credit is, is really a, is a, a factor with regard to premiums, whereas you know 20 years ago it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. And we ask, you know, okay, tell, do you have any boats? Do you have any RVs? Do you have any motorcycles? You know, because we're like everybody else. We're after all the business we can get. And <clears throat> we also know we're looking for those discounts, you know, to mm -hmm. try to give you the best program we can offer. So you mentioned credit. Is there a correlation to good credit means less of a risk? Yes. And, and Arguably, every, though, anything bad can happen to anybody. Exactly. Okay. But every well, I, I, no, every insurance company I know of, <laughs> let, me, let me say it this way, has quote a model, and part of that credit is part of that model. Okay, and you know, I, and, and I guess it makes sense that if you're a person that that doesn't value credit, then statistically you may not value driving either. I mean, there there's statistics to support that, but then unfortunately there's wonderful people. Who have had bad luck, whose credit's not good, but their driving record is phenomenal. But you know, companies have the model, and that's what they go by. And, but you mentioned if if they've been with an insurance company a while, the longer the better, because oh, yes. cause then they can kind of look past some of those things well, and say, here's here's your record with us. Every company that I again that I know of, I, I try to use, never use the word every, and never use the word <laughs> none because it doesn't. It, there's a, there's a, a middle there. Every company I know of will give a, a, a um, longevity discount, and we all call mm. it something different. Um, I mean, we have guaranteed renewal policies and that type of thing. But I have people, I had a person in my office, it was last week, and uh, she was 78 years old talking about changing auto insurance. And I said, how long, and she came in with one of her friends. We said, how, how long have you been with your current company? It was like 25 years, and I said, you stay right where you are, because insurance companies if if somebody like that age comes and there's an accident they run the risk of getting canceled much higher than if you've been with a company mm -hmm. and so um, longevity is important yes you know if you've built up a record with a company so if someone has been with the same company for a long time and they want to go speak to you, does that play a factor or? Okay, for what reason does that person want to speak to me? Maybe they want lower premiums or they need to stay something where they different, are. okay. If you're going, you're, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. because if you're going to come to me and you're going to save $20 and you have a claim, mm -hmm. but, but the thing about it, that longevity, it does, it does, it is a factor. Okay. Now, not all, not everyone ag agrees with me on that statement. Some, well, what some we, people. What we may recommend clients do is every, whatever, three, four, or five mm -hmm. years is go see another that company would, to see what they're offering, and then go meet with your current agent to say what's new, and here's an update on my life. That may or may not the, every three years be beneficial. It, well, or is that it, too it, much, too it, often? It, if they've been with a company. 25 years, I wouldn't switch. Okay. You know, but um, 
I'm making the assumption that the other company is treating them appropriately. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I think if you're a, dealing with an insurance professional, you're going, to, yeah. you're, you're going to have been dealt with appropriately. Yeah. If you're doing everything yourself, mm -hmm. then, you know, then that may not be the case. Uh, some companies don't offer all the lines that that a client needs, and so they right. have this policy f for that, and mm -hmm. something else over there, and right. something else for over there. Right. What do you think and, of that? And, and and some individuals want it that way. Uh. If you know, and, and this you know, this would have been a real good homeowner's risk for us. And he said, Ed, thank you, but I'm just comfortable doing it this way, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. You know. We explain it. That's it. You know, I'm, I'm. Our our approach is we ask people. I'm not going to. I think that's get, our approach any, too. We go, ask. Go we ask and answer the question right. periodically. Right. And and sometimes there's a reason to change, and sometimes it it's working out, and they just sure. need to make sure that what they have is appropriate for their current life situation. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people they are underinsured you know and, and you folks deal with that whether it's the value of the home or the liability limits or whatever and and, and you're going to run into that um, insurance is a topic that you know no, nobody wants to get excited talking about insurance <laughs> until something happens <laughs> and then when something happens it's oh that's things that commercials are made out of <laughs> <laughs> So say I have an apart an apartment. Yep. Do I need insurance on that? Certainly. Why? Now, you see, you're renting, right? Mm. Uh, or right. do you have an apartment? Oh, renting. Yeah. Okay. You're, <laughs> you're, you're talking about you're renting an apartment. You don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You. To me, sure, you need insurance for your to cover your possessions. Mm. But what's happening now? Um, your, your big apartment complexes, they're all demanding that you have a certain it's amount of liability yeah. and typically it's either 300 to 500,000 and it, it serves two purposes mm -hmm. number one if somebody comes in and gets hurt you're going to be covered but number two if you cause damage to that facility they're going to be covered mm -hmm. so it, you know that liability goes both ways you know and, and their their interest is protecting them themselves uh, your interest is in protecting your assets because, you know, you get in apartment buildings. It depends on how they're constructed, that type of thing. I mean, if there's a fire in one unit, it's, it's going to come into the other unit. Or what? one of the big problems is water line breaks. A water line break, you're going about your house six to eight months because it's going to take that long to... Because, wow. you know, we have to come in, strip out all the carpet. Mm -hmm. Typically, the flooring is ruined, the walls. And then if his... Things are damaged. His mm -hmm. computer, mm -hmm. his golf clubs. Oh yes. How yeah. does how does he prove that he had all that stuff? It seems like a great chance to upgrade on a few things, <laughs> or well, even just buy them if you're if you're uh, not the honest type. This Typic is where insurance companies have to. Let me let me tell you this. This, this is <laughs> when we're talking with our clients. This, this, I recommend that people just take pictures. You can take your cell phone and go around and just take pictures of everything, get them developed, and put them someplace mm -hmm. where that if, if there's a fire or a um, hurricane or tornado. We recommend the talking video with, with the phone now. You just video each room and show the clothes. Because I've had two clients over my 20 years have had their homes burned down. Yeah, okay. And, and they, they don't remember what they had. They don't. Until a few years later, oh, yeah, we had that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's really for them yes. too and, and, and what you're doing there Dan is a real service to those people because well, any of us can imagine if if you go home tonight and your home's not there you are not <laughs> going to remember what was inside that house <laughs> yeah. you know because I mean I've had it where people it's seven years later yeah. and I'll say oh that's why some type of documentation now but that documentation, you know, and I'm biased, I'm the insurance guy, is more for your protection than it is the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as an agent, I sit down and say, hey, don't worry about it. 
you know, we're got whatever coverage you got on the house, take seventy five percent of that. We have it on the contents. All right. But then what was in the house? And then so if you have if you have that, then you're going to know. I mean you're going to remember I had a sofa and a love seat and I had a baker, nice baker dining room table and chairs. But you're going to forget a lot of those accessories mm -hmm. that that's there, or you have in the attic, or stuff that's accumulated over right, a, right. a lifetime. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's that's a that's wonderful what you do. You don't have as people. many things right now. Yeah, no, you, you will. will. Right. That's the goal. <laughs> you will. People mm -hmm. said you will. <laughs> <laughs> Same time. Are there any insurance policies that cover some sort of uh, cyber security or identity theft? <clears throat> yeah, different companies have different types of endorsements mm. to cover that. Or there are some companies that will offer separate standalone policies. Now, I, I would tell you that every agency, uh, there, there are certain policies, and, and whether we're talking about like us as with State Farm or independent agents, there's, there's some policies that we all know if somebody comes to us and we really don't have then, then we'll refer you. We mentioned three in the, three other agencies or companies okay. that you might want to talk with, and it, that that goes both ways. The independent agents they'll do. You know, if you go to them or something, <clears throat> they'll say, "Hey, we can do it, but maybe you need to contact another company." <clears throat> so, with you being in Virginia Beach, do you see a lot of flood policies, second home, watercrafts, anything like that? <clears throat> All right, second homes. You know, basically a second home is just the same as a homeowner's policy. Okay. Same type of coverages, same everything, it's just a second home. Um, the, the watercraft, you know, a lot of that. Let's go back. Yep. The second home. Okay. Does it matter how often or how, how much it's occupied? Every company is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you have a second home, typically, mm -hmm. that you go to, then it's your second home. Okay. Now, if it's rented, if you're well, figuring out this, and all together yeah. different story, yeah. then it becomes more of a, yeah. a rental exposure, not a second home. Yeah, because I'm because I know that uh, insurance is high for unoccupied homes. We've had clients that <laughs> inherit homes, oh, yes. and while they're in the process of emptying the home, making it available to sell, the insurance premiums it, have skyrocketed because apparently it's risky to have a home unoccupied. And so, well, so I was wondering if there's no. the second home issue, but it's not an issue necessarily. No. The second, home. Okay. second home is not an issue. Okay. Uh, unoccupied is an issue, okay. and every company have have their own rules, oh, rules. Okay. But with how they handle that. Okay. All right, Devin, you mentioned that, and you said Water, watercraft. Yeah. All right, boats. It, you know, you know, there's there's little fishing boats, and then there's skidoos, yachts. There, there, yeah, the skidoos, <laughs> jet skis, and then there's nice bigger boats. Um, you know, every boat policy, you carry basically the same type of thing. You have coverage on the boat. You have coverage on equipment that you have on the boat, whether it's sonar type stuff or oh, uh, fishing equipment or that type of thing that, that typically you carry on your boat. And you know, liability. You have your uninsured coverage also because if another boat hits you, you know, all, <laughs> all of that is involved in the boat policy. Flood. Flood policy. Flood is one of it's a uh, misunderstood coverage mm -hmm. on your homeowner's policy, and, and and FEMA advertises all the time that flood is not covered under your homeowner's policy, and flood is not. Flood is it's been raining like crazy and that water level is rising. That's flood. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, you're not going to be able to call and say my house was flooded. No. If your house is flooded, all the rest of them in the neighborhood neighborhood will mm -hmm. also. They'll know which ones are right. flooded. Right, <laughs> and, and, and flood is not covered under your homeowner's policy. Uh, you know, you you know, most people get it through national flood insurance. Isn't it plan. required for some homes to have if, the policy? If the mortgage company requires it. Okay. So, yeah. So, so it's not a state law issue. It's a no, mortgage company it's, issue. It's the mortgage company issue, and people. You know, if you own your house and you don't have a mortgage on it, I mean, you could, you know, you could be right beside the ocean if you wanted to, but that's for you to make that decision. <laughs> Some of those homes in the Outer Banks are, are being taken by yes. the ocean. <laughs> yeah, you know, and of course, you know, Outer Banks, North Carolina is an altogether <laughs> different situation, and there's different type of coverages there. Yeah. But um, 
flood. You know, you, well, I mean, we, we had that situation, you talk about the Hudson Valley in uh, New York. It was like, I don't know, five years ago, in a certain section of Chesapeake, a, a whole area got flooded. It never happened before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was it was a surprise. But, unfor- you know, floods happen, and, you know, uh, it seems to be happening a little bit more. So pipe bursting won't count as That's a flood. That's not flood. <laughs> pipe bursting, quite frankly. That's a separate issue. <laughs> yeah. You know, a pipe bursting in the house, especially if it's like in the second floor or whatever, that's one of the situations you're going to be going six to eight months Yeah, to, to get it done. Well, uh, we lived in our previous house. The neighbor had all his uh, pipes with pinholes in it. Oh, dear. And the ceiling was oh yeah damaged and so they had to not just fix the pipes, but fix the whole, oh, sure. the whole oh, yeah. floor and ceiling, too. Oh, yeah. You have to take yeah. care of all the damage as a result of it. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, I think that's all we had for today, unless you have anything you want to bring up. No. I, no to me, I think, I think we've covered it. I, I, you know, Great. My only thought is every individual, need, they, you, know, you need to get your mm-hmm. assets covered. And liability is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And one thing I will say, just as, my, as an insurance guy, uh, I like high deductibles because as much as you think you can afford, because it saves you money on premium, and I say that for everything except comprehensive coverage on your auto policy, because we replace windshields all the time. In this area, there's always construction going. And uh, Yeah, we kind of push people to higher deductibles. Mm-hmm. Not yes. just to save money, but also psychological barriers. Like, do I really want to make this claim? Mm-hmm. Because oh, yeah. if, I you, mean, have a, if yeah. you have a number of claims, you may... You're going above. I had a neighbor who, in where I used to live, who, who had two real claims that he needed it, mm-hmm. but he'd, he'd filed one that he probably right. could have done without before mm-hmm. that, and so it made it three in, in a quick order, and he was out, and yeah. he found it very expensive to get yeah. coverage. Um, unfortunately, that yeah. happened, yes. So if you can spend 250 on a deductible, or you could get a $1,000 deductible, it's like, oh, you'll think twice about <laughs> sure. shelling out the $1,000 saying, let's make this claim. Mm-hmm. Sure. So we sure. like that idea. Well, thank you, Ed, for All coming right. out on the show. Uh, I learned a lot. Thank Hopefully our listeners did as well, but yeah, we'll see you I, next time. I, I hope they did also. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.